Welcome. Have you ever wondered why you should wait in one line when you go to the airport for check-in? Or whether it's better to be in separate lines when you go to the supermarket versus a single line? Or if you want to get your COVID shot, why is it important that we stay in one line as long as possible before we get service? Let's discuss this. Let me share with you two personal examples that I think many of us can relate to and then get to some key insights. When I need cash, I go to my bank's ATM on my way home after work. My bank has a branch located at the corner of a city block and it has one ATM machine on the south side and a second one on the western side. Let me use a red circle to represent the ATM machine. Given that I come from the northeast side, I cannot see whether there's a line of other customers represented by the green queue here at either ATM. Therefore, I must pick one ATM or queue at random, say 50-50. The problem, of course, is that I may have picked the wrong ATM, the one that has a queue while the other ATM is idle. That risk of having an idle server while people are waiting is eliminated if the two ATMs were next to each other and customers wait in a single line. We can use queuing theory to compare the waiting time if you were to join in the bank example where both ATM machines are next to each other and you wait in one queue. The first important observation is that as the system is more heavily utilized, meaning more and more people come to the ATM machine, of course it's more likely that you will have to wait and your wait will get longer. As the utilization increases towards what is called a heavily loaded system, that waiting time really shoots up significantly. The second observation is that waiting in one queue is much better than waiting in two queues. However, in this graph, it's kind of hard to compare these two things. The third observation from this graph is that when the system is very lightly utilized, you have a very low probability that you will have to wait behind anybody. So the difference between the two systems is immaterial. Therefore, it's kind of more instructive to compare how much of a waiting time improvement you get if we go from two queues to one queue. So here we have the graph at the right hand side. So let the red curve now be the waiting time in a two queue system. Then the waiting time reduction that you get relative to that situation with two queues if you move and join a single queue system is the green curve. The important observation here is that number one, at a medium utilization level of about 50%, there is a significant reduction. You cut your waiting time to one third, so you gain 66%. And of course, as the system becomes more heavily utilized, that improvement reduces somehow, but the great insight is that even under very heavy utilized systems, you still cut your waiting time by half if you join a single queue. So this example kind of works well for the setting of the bank. But what would happen if you can actually see how long the two queues are before you make your decision which queue you should join? When we check out at the supermarket, we encounter a different situation. Now we can see the length of the queues and most people will join the shorter queue. However, it may turn out that you took the slower queue. Therefore, waiting in a single queue is still better because it allows us to postpone the server choice until we are at the head of the queue. When we put these two stories together, we see that we actually have a choice between three system configuration. In B, you commit to choosing a line upon your arrival. In C, you postpone choosing the server until the last moment. So clearly, C is better. The question is, how much better? It turns out that joining the shortest of two queues is substantially better. However, having a single queue still is better. If the system is mediumly loaded 50% of the time, we can have a significant improvement of 23%. If the system is 70% utilized, 
that improvement reduces a little bit, but it still is 13%. And even when the system is highly utilized, 90% utilization, we still get a 5% improvement. So to summarize, why is waiting in a single line better? Remember, and you can check out a previous video of mine on that, is that if we have random variability together with dependent events, which in this case means that if people are ahead of you and they take longer, you will wait longer. So what can we do about this? Of course, if you can reduce the variability among when people show up or the time it takes them to service, that'd be better. But if you cannot do that, why is waiting in a single line better? Number one, it decreases server idleness. Second, by having a single line, you decouple serial dependencies. You should add flexibility and postpone as long as possible your server choice. Does this mean that a single line is always better? If the servers are humans, serving a single line, that has some possible free riding. If people, on the other hand, serve their own dedicated lines, and if they start slowing down, they will have a longer line in front of them. And of course, that gives them a powerful incentive to continue and work harder. If you enjoy this movie, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this content or get an alert whenever I publish another video like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you'll get a text message whenever new content is produced. Thank you. Hope to see you again.